Welcome to the captivating world of the 1965 film Thunderball. Among the James Bond franchise's array of thrilling adventures, Thunderball stands as a pivotal piece renowned for its iconic underwater sequences and high-stakes espionage. Yet beyond its action-packed facade lie lesser-known anecdotes that add layers of intrigue to this cinematic gem. Did you know that the movie's production involved an actual legal dispute, adding to its behind-the-scenes drama? The enduring appeal of Thunderball often sparks conversations about favorite scenes or memorable moments. Perhaps it's the breathtaking underwater cinematography or the adrenaline-pumping casino sequences that linger in the minds of many. What scene or aspect of this film has left an indelible mark on your movie experience? Share your cherished memories or personal encounters with Thunderball below. Whether it's a nostalgic viewing with family or a serendipitous encounter with the film's legacy, we're eager to hear your stories and reflections. Dive into the conversation and let's celebrate this classic spy thriller together. The movie Thunderball, released in 1965, holds several interesting facts worth noting. Among these, the film boasted a budget that exceeded the combined budgets of the initial three Bond movies. This financial backing reflected the growing popularity and ambition behind the franchise at the time. Additionally, Thunderball stands as a milestone within the James Bond series as the first movie shot in Panavision. This decision to use Panavision marked a technical advancement, expanding the visual scope and cinematic experience for audiences. Moreover, while the film references the Golden Grotto in the Bahamas, home to the fictional deadliest sharks under Largo's ownership, these creatures were entirely made up for the movie. In reality, the Bulls and Busy Shark claims the title of the most dangerous to humans in tropical waters, not the mythical Golden Grotto Sharks. These factors contribute to the legacy of Thunderball, highlighting both its financial significance and technical innovation, while also showcasing the blending of fiction and reality within its narrative. Main title designer Morris Binder made a notable return to the Bond franchise with this film. After his absence in the prior two Bond movies, Binder's creative touch re-emerged, shaping the iconic opening title scene in Dr. No and continuing throughout subsequent Bond films until License to Kill. His artistic vision in Thunderball, reintroducing the distinctive style and sequences, became a hallmark of the series. Binder's legacy remains intertwined with the enduring visuals that define the essence of Bond's cinematic world. The 1965 Bond film introduced a groundbreaking element that left a lasting impact. Amidst the action-packed scenes and iconic moments, an intriguing detail surfaced the absence of Bond's signature cigarette. Surprisingly, this marked the first instance in the series where Zoo 7 refrained from smoking. An interesting juxtaposition arises, however, as keen-eyed viewers might spot a conspicuous papier MCH Marlboro box subtly placed within a festival scene. This unexpected placement hints at a departure from Bond's smoking habits while playfully nodding to the brand's presence. This seemingly minor alteration in Bond's on-screen behavior adds a layer of intrigue to an otherwise familiar portrayal. The shift away from smoking subtly underscores evolving societal perceptions while maintaining a sly nod to the cultural context of the time, evident in the discreet yet noticeable appearance of the Marlboro box, a curious detail for eagle-eyed fans to uncover. The term Thunderball holds a significant military meaning it's a descriptor used by U.S. soldiers for the mushroom cloud formed during atomic bomb testing. In this 1965 movie, the title refers to the potential detonation of stolen atomic bombs by the criminal organization SPECTRE. This term encapsulates the looming threat of mass destruction, mirroring the stakes within the film's plot. The choice of this word, as the title signifies the perilous consequences of SPECTRE's actions, emphasizing the gravity of their intentions and the global risk they pose. Interestingly, the film's title connects directly to the potential cataclysmic impact portrayed in the storyline, adding a layer of depth and urgency to the narrative. Goldfinger director Guy Hamilton, initially offered the directing job for the film, declined due to creative fatigue. This paved the way for Terence Young to helm Thunderball, bringing his directorial prowess to the 1965 Bond installment. Hamilton's decision not only shaped the course of Thunderball, but also highlighted the challenges faced in maintaining the momentum of the burgeoning James Bond franchise. Terence Young's direction would go on to play a crucial role in the film's success, steering it through the uncharted waters of underwater cinematography and global espionage. The transition from one directorial vision to another marked a pivotal moment in Thunderball's production, 
underscoring the dynamic nature of the Bond series during its formative years. Martine Basic, known for her role in From Russia with Love, took on the character of Paula Kaplan in Thunderball. Basic's transformation from a pale stage performer to a sun-kissed native girl added authenticity to her portrayal. The behind-the-scenes effort to ensure Basic's appearance aligned with her character's background sheds light on the meticulous attention to detail in Bond film productions. The Bahamas setting, with its radiant sun, became a crucial backdrop for Basic's preparation, emphasizing the commitment to visual coherence in bringing the Bond universe to life. Bond's underwater camera, an Econos Calypso I, introduced a technical facet to Thunderball. Originally designed for Jacques-Yves Cousteau, the Nikonos Calypso I became an integral tool for capturing the film's iconic underwater sequences. The deliberate covering of the Nikonos logo in close-ups hinted at a subtle departure from commercial branding, maintaining the immersive experience for the audience. This technical choice showcased the adaptation of cutting-edge equipment for cinematic storytelling, pushing the boundaries of technology in the portrayal of James Bond's daring missions. In the depths of Thunderball's production, these behind-the-scenes elements, the directorial shift, the actor's preparation, and the choice of equipment wove together to shape the film's narrative. The interplay of creative decisions and technical advancements solidified Thunderball's status as a milestone in the James Bond series, contributing to the legacy of this iconic spy franchise. In Thunderball, a departure from Bond's classic Shaken, not stirred vodka martini occurs. Instead, he opts for a Dom Perignon 55 champagne while dining with Domino by a swimming pool. This subtle shift in Bond's drink choice adds a distinct flavor to his character, deviating from the usual cocktail preference. The scene underscores the film's attention to detail in portraying Bond's refined tastes and lifestyle, even as he navigates the high-stakes world of espionage. It's a noteworthy deviation from the established Bond formula, offering a unique glimpse into Zer 7's preferences in this particular installment. This departure from tradition reflects the filmmaker's commitment to keeping the character fresh and dynamic, contributing to the nuanced portrayal of James Bond in Thunderball. As we bid adieu to our cinematic journey through the captivating realms of espionage and underwater intrigue, I implore you to take a moment and let the echoes of Thunderball resonate within the corridors of your mind. This 1965 masterpiece isn't merely a film, it's a vessel that transcends time, carrying with it the essence of an era that flickers in the sepia tone recesses of nostalgia. As you navigate the memories and emotions stirred by Thunderball, consider the threads it weaves into the tapestry of your own narrative. Perhaps it's the suave allure of Bond, the pulse-quickening moments beneath the waves, or the subtle symphony of espionage that has left an indelible mark on your cinematic soul. In the silence after the credits roll, what lingers? Is it the thrill of the chase, the enigmatic allure of exotic locations, or the subtle dance between danger and desire? Share with us the fragments of Thunderball that have etched themselves into your memory, for in the dialogue between audience and art, new perspectives emerge. Your thoughts, like the ripples on a tranquil surface, contribute to the ongoing legacy of this cinematic gem. Invite fellow aficionados to delve into their own reservoirs of recollection and let the collective symphony of shared experiences amplify the resonance of Thunderball. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic odyssey with us. Your time, your reflections, and your connection to Thunderball are the unseen treasures that enrich our collective appreciation for the magic of storytelling. Until our next rendezvous in the world of celluloid dreams, may your memories of Thunderball continue to shimmer like hidden gems in the vast sea of cinema.